Hey boys and girls, let's get started on our project today. For today, we are gonna do an underwater scene with really any animal that you would like to do. I'm gonna show you how to do a seahorse just because I thought um, seahorses are really uh, interesting animals and interesting shape and you can use some nice colors on them. But if you have another animal that you wanna do, that's okay. You can even turn your paper this way if you wanna draw like a long shark. You can draw a whole bunch of different um, fish, uh, jellyfish, anything that you think you would like to do. So to get started with this, let's get out our supply packet. For this, you are gonna need a piece of watercolor paper. Now, I've included two pieces of watercolor paper. One of those is extra in case you wanna make two different scenes or if you just wanna use it to draw something else, that's okay too. So I need my watercolor paper. I need my watercolors. I need these two pieces of green tissue paper. And then the last thing that you're gonna get out is a little plastic bag that has some sequins in it and it also has a little bit of bubble wrap. So we have a lot of materials to use today. Uh, we are gonna set our sequins aside and we are gonna set our tissue paper aside. We don't need that right now. And we are just gonna focus on our um, watercolor. So let me open that up. Now this um, seahorse that I drew, it took me a couple of tries to get it right. So if I were you, I would get a, a piece of just scrap paper and I'm gonna give you a quick little lesson on how to draw a seahorse. And then if you think that that's something that you want to uh, do larger on your piece of paper, that's okay. Because the first thing that we're gonna do is this little shape. It almost looks like um, an upside down M. So make a shape that looks like this. Okay, and that is the top of the seahorse's head. Then we are gonna make his mouth, which is right like this, and then there's his under chin part. So I just did this end and then that. Then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna curl that up a little bit, just like that. And I'm gonna add an eye right here, okay? Now this is the top of his head. So I'm gonna do a shape that looks like that. And then I'm going to go, they have this interesting little shapes that go right down their back, like that. Now I'm gonna do the belly, which sticks out right there. Right like that. And then I'm gonna do a little curl right here, okay? Now I wanna do this little, it's almost like a little um, fin that he uses to help him swim. And then we're gonna go right down here and connect it like that. And then you can add any little decorations that you want. So like I said, this took me a couple of times, boys and girls, to learn how to draw this. So if you decide that you wanna practice, I would practice on a plain piece of paper and then do it on this paper for real. If you decide, you know what, Mrs. Peterson, I tried to draw that three times and I cannot get it. That is absolutely fine. You go and you draw a, an undersea creature that you know how to draw, that you feel more comfortable with. This was just an idea. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do that exact same shape. I'm gonna use this to help me remember my steps. So let's see, make sure my paper's right where it needs to be. I'm gonna do this shape like that. I'm gonna go a little more quickly this time because you guys have seen me do it. And I'm gonna do that shape, and then one, two, three, I think I'm gonna do that thing. Then I'm gonna do the belly, I like a big round belly, like that. Okay, mine is starting to dry out a little bit, so let me go on top of a little bit of that. These Sharpies do run out, but you have to use a Sharpie for this one, boys and girls. You can't use another regular watercolor marker because when you paint on top of it, it's gonna smear. So for this one, you need to use a Sharpie, which is why I gave you all a Sharpie. 
So my seahorse is finished. Now I can start adding some beautiful color inside of my seahorse. And that is what you have your watercolor for. So let me move this a little closer. And you need to make sure you have nice clean water, otherwise your colors will not look really bright and fresh. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow. Some people like to start, oh, you know what? My yellow feels a little green in there. Let me, I just got it all wet and I'm gonna just go like that and I'm gonna clean it out. It was just looking a little greenish to me. Every once in a while, your watercolors seem to feel a little bit dirty. Now you can um, paint your uh, seahorse or whatever you paint, any color you want. You can let it be um, uh, stripes. You can just let it be blobs. I'm gonna do blobs. I'm sort of a blob person because then I like them to all bleed into each other. Now, if you want watercolors to bleed, you have to make sure that they stay wet. If they dry, they won't bleed. And sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you may say, you know what? I really don't want my watercolor to bleed. And let me show you something cool. If you take this and drop it right in there, doesn't that make a pretty, pretty uh, design? So watercolors are a lot of fun to play with. And that's why I gave you an extra piece of watercolor paper that if you wanna do some practice with your bleeding designs, that would be a great thing for you to do. I think I'll add a little green on mine. I'm not sure if I'm gonna to add too much blue because I'm gonna have blue water all around my, uh, my sea creature. And I don't really want, I want there to be a little contrast. Now, you may notice that if you take green and orange and they bleed into each other, they do turn into sort of a brownish color. So I'm not gonna do that over here. I'm gonna do red because I know that red and orange look good when they bleed into each other. Okay, let me do a little bit more. Red and green also will turn brown if they're right next to each other. So I may try a little purple in between there. Let's see, I got a little purple here. And also boys and girls, there's always the option if you wanna make new colors let me show you how you can do that. If you wanna take your purple and mix it with some blue, you get a really color, a really pretty bluish purple. I think I need a little bit more purple in that. So this is your mixing tray, and that's for you to mix colors together if you don't have all the colors that you need. Just for a little bit of fun. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of brown there. Let me get a little bit more of this color. Finish that up. And if you don't want colors to bleed, as I mentioned before, you just let it dry in between. Paint it and then go do something else. Finish up that little fin here. That's looking a little gray. I think I need a little bit more purple in there. I'm just gonna drop some purple in there. And then the tail, I think I'll put yellow on there. Yellow mixes good with all of these colors. There we go. And if you wanna say, what would that look like? Oh, that's sort of cool. Lots of fun, fun bleeding that you can do. Now you have a choice. If you feel that when you paint the water that you are gonna get your fingers in your um, sea creature, you might just wanna let this to dry. But if you feel like, you know what, Mrs. Peterson, I think I can be very careful and not touch my seahorse, you can go ahead and work on your water now. I'm gonna go and do that. Now, for this, I'm totally gonna to need my mixing tray. So mine is getting a little dirty. I took a paper towel and I'm gonna clean this middle section out. I'm gonna dip it in my water, get that really nice and clean. Now your uh, paint is a little newer than mine and so you might not have used that yet. But there, now that's nice and clean. The reason I need that is because I wanna show you how I made this cool little bubbly looking water. And the way I did that is inside your plastic bag is some bubble wrap. Well, that's a good name because we want there to be bubbles. Now there's two sides to the bubble wrap. One side of the bubble wrap is very smooth. I don't really feel the bubbles. 
This side is much softer and I can see these little containers that contain uh, air. So this is the side that I want to use when I'm creating bubbles around it. And I turned it into not really a paintbrush, but I folded it up like this and I dipped it in my paint and I went all around it. Now, if you just want to hold it like this, that's okay. I found it worked a little bit easier if I went like this and then just added a little bit of tape to keep it in place. But you don't have to tape it if you don't want to. See how I just, oh, let me add a little bit more tape. Just a little bit of scotch tape, put it around there. Okay, now it'll stay in the same position. Now you can try to dip it in your blue paint like that, but I think that you're gonna end up getting it in the green and the purple. So that's what our mixing tray is for. You just scoop a little paint out, put it in there. Mine's pretty watery. I mean, yeah, because it, um, it's been wet for a while. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Just drop a few little drops of water in there like that. Get a nice little soup going in. And that is what I'm going to use to dip my bubble wrap in. Let's see how that's gonna work. And dip as much as I can. See those little circles that you're getting? Ooh, that's fun. So I'm gonna, oh, need a little bit more. Being careful not to get them on my seahorse. I'm gonna keep dipping. I'm gonna go all over. That makes it almost look like there's a little bit of bubbly water around him, which I really like that look. And you need to be doing this on a piece of paper, maybe newspaper, something that it doesn't matter if you get paint on it. Now I'm running out, so I'm gonna go get a little bit more. There we go. Let's see how that works. Make sure that you can see me doing all my dipping. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm trying to get as close as I can without getting it on top of my seahorse. And when you're all finished and have pretty well done, you may say, you know what? I think I wanna put sort of a purpley bluish on there too. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue again, right like that. And this time I'm gonna add a little bit of purple to it. Purpley bluish water. And I'm gonna put that on top, see how that looks. Ooh, I like that. Two different shades of blue. If you happen to have some other paint at home where you have two, two different kinds of blue, it's sort of fun. It makes it look a little, gives it a little depth, we call it, if you add different colors. Now, don't get so carried away that you just keep printing and printing and printing so that it's totally blue. You want to keep that little textury bubbly look. Wow, I love that. I think I even like that better than my first one. I am now finished with the painting portion and now you are going to let this dry because we are going to add some of this cool seaweed with our tissue paper and we're going to also glue some um, sequins on it just for a little bit of sparkle. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. I don't know, maybe an hour or so and then I'm going to come back and check it and we will finish it. So it looks like my painting is all dry. Okay, good. Now is the time to add some fun little plants, some little seaweed to my painting. So you have two different colors of tissue paper and you can really make this any way that you want. You can just cut out some flat leaves. And now let me show you a little trick with this uh, tissue paper. It's very, very thin. So you can cut out multiple leaves at the same time. In fact, you can fold it once and then you can fold it again. So you can actually cut four out at the same time and you can draw them with whatever you want. Um, you can do a pencil. You can just freehand it if you want. I'm just gonna do a little leaf shape like that. But watch how when I cut this out, I'm gonna cut it on the inside because I don't wanna show the black line. I'll get four at the same time, which is really handy. Okay, right like that. And then if I wanted to cut a little stem, 
for them to float on. You can just cut a long, thin stem like that. And I think it probably works best with a little glue stick. Now fine, don't do it right on top of your painting because then you'll get glue all over it. Oh, this wants to stick to me, doesn't it? <laughs> Got a new little leaf friend. Okay, so you're just gonna put a little bit, and be careful because it does tear very easily. And I think I'm just gonna glue that right down here. Now I might want to make this taller, but then you can just put a little glue on the back of your leaves. I think I'll put that right up there like that. Make it a little bit taller. So this is using just a very flat technique, which is great. But if you decide that you want to have a 3D technique to make it look a little more round and a little bit, have a little bit more texture, uh, that's what I did on here. So for this, I cut strips of paper and I twisted it. Let me show you how to do that. We'll do that with this dark green. And you're gonna cut something a little bit thicker, like that. Then you're just gonna twist it like this. There's really no way to do this wrong. And at, you, even at the top, if you wanna go like this, like that, and twist this, and then twist this, and then maybe have some little leaves at the end, that's a fun way to do it too. So you can just play around with that, twist it this way, twist it that way, it'll make it look like real seaweed. And then I'm gonna put my glue right on my painting. I think this is about where it needs to go. I'm trying to put a lot on there. I'm just gonna lay it like this and stick that on there. If you have a little bit extra at the end like I did, you can just snip that off like that. So that's starting to look like a little underwater kingdom, isn't it? I really like that. So you might wanna add a little bit more, maybe make this one a little taller. You can even add more. You can layer them on top of each other. All sorts of fun things that you can do with this. Now for my finishing touch, hidden in here somewhere, I believe, is a googly eye. Just one, because you're seeing your seahorse from the side. There it is. Now I drew my own eye so I don't know that I'm gonna use this, but if you wanted to, if you're into googly eyes, I wanted to give you an option, or maybe you uh, drew another fish coming over here and you wanna use that. So somewhere hidden inside all of your sequins and sparkles is a googly eye. Now, if you decide that you wanted to add a few little shimmery touches, cause you know, things underwater can look real shimmery. I just have a whole variety of things and you can use them. Oh, you know what? I wanna use this as a bubble. I'm gonna use this. I found a blue one. I'm gonna use that as a little bubble that's coming out. Oop, look, my glue's almost finished, isn't it? I'm gonna make some little bubbles come out of his mouth. Um, so I think I'll add, take some other colors and I'm gonna put a little glue there and just put a little sequin there. Maybe I would wanna find um, some other colors and put them on my seaweed. Again, this is not something that you have to do, but I know some of you like to add a little sparkle. So you can add, now that I've gotten started, I'm really getting into it, aren't I? I think I need to finish my final little circle that I drew there. I think that I will put, there's a little gold one. I'll put that right on there. Ooh, this is a fun shape too. You could add that to your seaweed. All sorts of fun things that you can do. Um, I hope you enjoyed making your underwater scene and I hope you remembered that you do not have to do a seahorse and also if you wanna turn it this way, you could, oh, you know what? If you had some shells left over from the beach, you could glue that on the bottom. If you have some real sand, you could put some glue and sprinkle the sand on the bottom. Oh my gosh. My creativity's going wild and I hope yours does too. So have a fun time um, finishing the rest of your underwater scene. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.